Welcome to Real Marketing University with David Collins, a podcast series designed exclusively for real estate agents who are ready to level up their practice and become the go-to neighborhood expert. Today's episode is brought to you by the Institute for Luxury Home Marketing, the premier independent training authority for real estate agents working in the luxury residential market. Go to luxuryhomemarketing.com to learn more, including how you can earn your CLHMS designation, recognized around the globe as the gold standard in luxury designation. Without further ado, here is your host, David Collins. Good morning again. This is David Collins, president and founder of Real Marketing. Today, we have just a huge honor. Uh, we have an agent out of Idaho named Wayne Peterson, who has decided to join, join us today and tell us a little bit about his career. I am super, super fascinated with Wayne and something I've never told him, and that was if you gave me $1,000 to bet against him or for him, I would have bet against him. Um, only because of his length of time in the business and the market he was going after. And I'm going to let Wayne talk more about that. But um, mm-hmm. again, any of you have anybody looking to move to Idaho, this is your agent. If you <laughs> want to be super professionally taken care of, uh, your client's taken care of, Wayne's your go-to guy, uh, and you will not regret it. And I think that's our biggest concern when we refer agents out. Um, let's just dive right in this. Let's see. And Wayne, the thing that I really want to know from you, and, and I th- we've, we've had a lot of conversations, but I've never asked you point blank, what did you do prior to real estate? Oh. Great, great question, David. I had a very long executive career before real estate. Um, My career was in the commercial printing and publishing industry. Um, I'm primarily a marketing guy and have been for a very long time. And I was successful marketing and growing companies in, frankly, what was a a brutally competitive and um, declining industry. I can relate. (laughs) But go ahead. Yes, you can. Yeah. And so um, I'm assuming the printing and marketing business, which is is fascinating to me because that, obviously we do a lot of that. For those of you who don't know, we printed and mailed seven and a half million pieces last year all across the US and Canada. So I can understand that. What? May, okay, so you're an executive. I get it. You retiring, I take it, and then decide to get into real estate. What brought you to that conclusion? No, I, frankly, I didn't retire, David. Um, The whole idea of retiring holds absolutely no appeal for me. Um, Frankly, now I'm having too much fun. I was very ready for a change. There's no two ways around that. Most important to me, I wanted a change that didn't have me getting on aircraft for business travel with any frequency because I'd simply done far, far too much of that. So my wife and I moved to North Idaho very intentionally, um, and part of the the initial pull to uh, consider doing this was a desire for us to get very connected in the community that we had landed in. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. When you moved to Idaho, did you obviously must have gotten your license? How did you pick a broker? David, you already know the answer to that because but my I, audience does it. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea how to go about choosing a broker. Yeah, I went through the licensing process, of course, as everybody has to. And we, you know, and I don't do anything without research. So we had done some homework leading up to that. But the answer to your direct question around a broker was I knew because I'm a marketing guy that the only way that I was going to build a sustainable business was if I made the effort to build a brand. So one of the key questions that had to get answered was um, what brokerage was going to give me the greatest latitude to do that? And I had, you know, there were people, there were people at a number of brokerages that were interested in having me take a run at what I was going to do with them. Um, but frankly, as a byproduct in, in part of the conversation you and I had, um, I chose Keller Williams. And in addition to all the great things about KW, um, which I don't really need to unpack for your audience, um, one of the things that was what was most important was a great deal of latitude to do what I wanted to do with a brand. Got it. Well, thank you very much for that. And I think that that's important. I get asked that question a lot. I've got a a dear friend has been in the, in the cosmetic business and she's very, very successful mm-hmm. for 30 years. And she's going through the same process of 
actually trying to identify the right brokerage. And I think that that's a, a critical step in the first move that you make mm-hmm. in real estate and, and who you are. So I know you're big on farming. How did you decide that you were going to delve in this thing called farming, which has been around in the real estate business since the beginning of real estate? But what made you decide? I mean, most agents don't walk in their first day and say, I'm going to start farming. As a marketing guy, choosing an audience is key and critical. Figuring out who it is that you're going to serve and what it is that you're going to do for them that is likely going to be different than the usual and customary. Um, you know, part of what what put me on this trail was my wife and I had had a miserable and then a great experience um, selling a luxury home of our own about six years ago. And we had an agent that failed us miserably. And then we had a, a second agent who is world class and still a great friend. And I watched what she was doing and I found it, frankly, intriguing. So I suspected there was an opportunity to do this differently than the usual and customary. And frankly, I wanted to see if there was a market space with uh, with um, an opportunity to do something, frankly, a little disruptive. So I researched the local market and I looked for I looked at every single segment. I looked at typical homes. I looked at farms and ranches. I looked at raw land and timber. I looked at commercial. I looked at multifamily. And then finally, last, I looked at luxury. And I found a market opportunity in luxury, which frankly was a huge surprise. That's not where I had expected it. I had really believed from, you know, the people that I had gotten to know locally that the market, that the luxury segment of the market was largely dominated by two brokerages here. But when I dug into it, I found out that the two combined had just a little more than a 30% market share. And the rest of the market was in the wind, um, meaning that there were luxury transactions scattered across scores of agents who typically would have maybe one in a two year period. So I looked at that and then I realized, OK, I've got to figure out how I can reach these people, build visibility, build salience, and then also build you know, a, a brand in the minds of those folk. So farming although what I do is a little unconventional, um, farming was absolutely key and critical to doing that from day one. Got it. And, and then again, you, you are amazing at the research, which obviously as a company we do um, for our mm-hmm. clients. And, and I thought that was quite brilliant. And, and again, I probably would have gone down the same path as you and luxury would have been the last thing I looked at. So let me, just a side question. I know we haven't talked about this question. The two big brokerages that you, that Obviously, we had 30% of the market, leaving 70% to what I call the one-hit wonders. Um, mm-hmm. Have they had any comments about to you or with you? Or are they cooperating? How is that relationship with them? Straight answer is that the individual agents are professional and cooperative. I haven't had any sort of untoward experience with any of them. I do hear that they are paying attention to what I'm doing particularly given the results that we had last year in 2021, because we came out of nowhere and were, you know, top 10 in the market for that year. And that's really when they were first becoming aware of us. Well, so I I, I know I was going to save this question to the end, but it's it's an appropriate time. Um, How many transactions did you do last year? And what was the average sale price? Um, I did a total of seven transactions. The average sales price was a, a little north of two million, and total production for for the year was twelve million. That's yeah, that's an amazing statistic for a brand new agent. And mm-hmm. but obviously you came out of the gate very professional, and and that's really really uh, important. I think that's made a huge difference. And I'm glad to hear that the other agents aren't. Uh, are being professional in the luxury mm-hmm. market. That's exactly what they should be. Um, how many of those transactions were a result of working? Well, let me back up. How did you decide to work with real marketing? Oh, well, that that's a really simple and straightforward story. When I realized that the big opportunity was going to be in the luxury space, and when I say big opportunity, that doesn't mean I have no competitors. What it does mean is that 
you've got 70% of the market that's not concentrated. So, you know, the opportunity to carve a section of it up was, is significant. When I landed on luxury, I started doing every, every piece of research I could do to come up the learning curve on, okay, what do I need to understand about luxury marketing? So series of books, you know, well beyond just the real estate market to understand how luxury behaves, period. But in doing a research about luxury real estate, I landed on, of course, the Institute for Luxury Home Marketing um, and watched literally every single video that they had posted, including the interviews with you. And um, frankly, that's what prompted me to reach out to, to Real Marketing was recognizing, OK, well, let's face it, it's fairly easy for one marketing guy to identify and recognize another good marketing guy. And clearly from the uh, the uh, interviews that you had with um, Diane, it was very clear that you guys had a model that was likely going to adapt itself well to my space. Um, if, in fact, I could customize it with you a bit. Right. And of course, that's that's always a yes from us. Um, we have a, a real rule here. There's 56 employees here. And one of our rules is nobody says no to a client other than me. So <laughs> <laughs> pretty easy rule. I, you know, I want to just backtrack. I know that and, and this, this whole pandemic thing um, has kept me off of airplanes, but I can so relate to your former career. I flew 175,000 miles my last year of traveling. So I, I can empathize with you. And I, I literally, you wake up in hotels and trying to figure out what city you're in. And then one day I woke up at home and tried to figure out what city I was in and said, you know what, I think I've, <laughs> I think I've had enough. <laughs> so well, we're into the webinar world. Now, I know this, the Luxury Institute is, a, I'm a sponsor of them. They're a sponsor of us. We love that relationship. Uh, they're just brilliant at luxury and, and getting agents' mindsets. Um, and, and, some, and even something as simple as the lingo. Tell, us, tell me a little bit, without getting too deep into it, um, why that's important, the, the Institute, why that was important to you. Well, the Institute relationship is important to me for, for two or three reasons. Certainly the, the educational content that they make available um, and they continue to add to over time has been frankly eye-opening. Um, I didn't know what I didn't know. The second thing is that like the relationship with real marketing, the Institute um, provides a significant number of resources that are part of the membership. I've taken advantage of nearly all of them. And the third piece is the Institute launched a network function that encourages collaboration. And rather than behaving sort of like the, you know, like a low grade version of a social network, it actually works very well. Um, I've been able to, um, I've been able to ask for help around particular situations and have experienced agents offer me great counsel and advice, and I've been able to offer some in return. Really nice. Um, yeah, I like the Institute. And again, I think that the education that they, they provide is, is second to none in, in that arena. Um, <laughs> what, any, what additional strategies? Uh, well, actually, I'm going to back up and we'll, we'll, let's say, so right now with real marketing, I know you, you chose a, a, a really nice neighborhood. Tell us about your experience with real marketing and, and not so much about us, but like what the neighborhoods you picked, how it worked, and then your plans for expansion. Well, we're in the middle of expansion because I work in a resort area, David. The thing that people don't understand about the area that I'm in, I'm in the Idaho Panhandle. I'm literally 60 miles from the Canadian border. And what people don't know about the area is that it's a year round resort area. We have three very large lakes here. The lake that I live on is 45 miles long with 111 miles of, of waterfront. So you've got lots of luxury properties that are waterfront. But we've also got the largest ski resort in Idaho here, Schweitzer Mountain Resort. So we've got, so we literally have a year round resort market. The challenge though is in part because of the size of the lakes and in part because 75% of the land area in North Idaho is public land of various kinds. You've got relatively, you've got relatively low population density. Um, I started out working in one county 
we only have 45,000 residents in the entire county. I've expanded and my, my coverage that we're marketing into now covers all three of the big lakes here, which is Priest Lake, Lake Ponderé, and Lake Coeur d'Alene. And that gives me, but that still gives me um, a total population density across two counties of less than 200,000 people. So if I look at the luxury segment of that market, if we take the rule of thumb and look at the top 10% of properties or transactions as luxury, or we look at a million plus in fair market value, um, I've got right around 7,000 properties that fit that description across two counties. And essentially what I do is rather than market by neighborhood, um, we're, we're in the process of ramping up to market to the owners of every one of those luxury properties in that area. Because again, that, that maxes out what I can do across the, um, you know, across this, this regional space and given the low population density. Got it. All right. Well, very, very well done. Just give us a little bit about your experience with real marketing and maybe why someone oh. might consider working with us. <laughs> Frankly, my experience with real marketing, David, and you know this, has been fabulous. I am um, unabashedly a raving fan. And frankly, it's because the team is great. And I've dealt with eight or nine of your folk over the last you know, year and a half. Jesse Ryerson is my primary point of contact. Frankly, he went to the effort of understanding the business that I'm working to build. He manages the whole account relationship, and he does a first-rate job identifying the right resources when I need them. The primary design guy that I work with is Ryan Phoebus. He designs and manages both of our luxury marketing reports because we have two different versions now for the two different primary areas we're in. And uh -huh. that's what I wanted to see. <laughs> oh, yeah. We open have... that up. Do me a favor and open that up. Sure. We have two versions of it. Um, and so you've got cover, you've got a range of different information that we make available. Um, some of the statistical, again, trying to appeal to the fact that people take in information differently. Um, and we've now added on the back cover a, an area snapshot for people who take in things graphically. So um, we're mailing about 4,000 of those now across the two areas. And Ryan Phoebus manages that whole process for me. Um, he is great to work with. We've just gone through a redesign because we keep working to improve our game. Liz Pfeiffer has gone to bat for me a handful of times to look at an idea, but look at a new idea, figure out how to solve that. I mean, I can go on down through a list of, you know, four or five other people that I've had opportunity to work with who have been fabulous. So I've yet to come across somebody who isn't first rate. Well, I, I really appreciate that. And I think that the um, over the 30 years of doing this, many people have tried to copy what we do uh, on behalf of a client. They'll get your piece. And of course, we only work, you're, you're, you have an exclusivity to every home that you mail to. And mm -hmm. as do the other 1,700 of our clients, um, I think that's the, the moral of the story is, is that you're talking about just to get your piece out, you're working with a team. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people try and copy this. What most people don't know is, is that 14 people touch every market report. And so somebody trying to jump in the business and copy what you do would take a tremendous effort. And, and I think the more we better that product for you, the harder it makes for your competition to come in and, uh, you know, undermine your, your success. Um, well, I, I think the, the comment that I would add on, on the tail end of that, David, is I'll give you a good example of, of people in your organization that I benefit from that I've never spoken to directly. And that is you've got some brilliant people who are doing mail list processing. Yep. And I ask questions, Ryan fields them, he gets answers back. And every time, every single time I ask a question, I get a very thorough um, answer from somebody who is very knowledgeable about how to get mail successfully through the uh, United States Postal Service. Well, and, and as well, you're so close to Canada that we actually have a facility in Buffalo, New York that will mail uh, into Canada, should you mm -hmm. ever choose to do that. And I think that's a, and it's not that, like if you mail something from 
the U.S. to Canada, it's about $4 in postage alone. Throw in a dollar for the piece, it's $5. If we do it, because we literally drive across the border every day uh, with the mail, it's, I think it's 75 cents versus four bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to conclude, and I know I value your time a lot, and I, I did say 30 minutes, and we're getting close to that. Um, any advice that you could share with, you know, I usually say new agents. I'm going to say experienced agents this time. You know, those, you, you, you work, you, you now are in, 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 in and around your community of real estate. There are agents that have been there for many years that don't have near the success you do. What would you advise them? It's going to sound, David, counterintuitive, but I think it's the core. It, it, it it's the core fact of making any kind of marketing effort work. And it is you've got to walk into it understanding that you are playing the long game. And, and let me let me unpack that for a second. Please do. I've watched a number of agents say, okay, I'm going to, you know, I've had this, this great property close, or I've had two or three closings in a short period of time. I've got a war chest. I'm going to, I'm going to do some marketing. And I immediately get worried because what I watch them do is they will make one effort to do one splash. And then they have, they've used all of the budget that they set aside And then they stand back and they're waiting for the phone to ring, waiting for something to happen. And it doesn't because fundamentally that's not the way marketing works. Um, You've got to direct marketing, especially you've got to repeatedly touch a potential client in a memorable way. And you're going to do that literally for months before you start to see a result. Great example is what I went through. We started mailing to our initial list of 1200 in November, my fr- we mailed every single month. My phone rang in response to one of my mailings for the very first time in March. Got it. Now, it continues to ring because we've now got what, you know, I mean, the, the easy way to describe it is salience. We've got memorable visibility. Right. So, The first thing when you look at doing anything in marketing, particularly if they're going to look at doing something that is direct marketing, you've got to recognize from day one that you're playing the long game. You're going to have, you've got to make multiple impressions before you're going to start triggering any kind of response to it. Um, And that's the reason that so many agents will look at it. They'll have spent something and then they stand back and say, well, marketing just doesn't work. Well, guys, I'm living proof marketing works when it does when it's done using, um, you know, the tools and resources that are available and practicing good marketing, which is multiple touches over time. I think the multiple touches and your marketing background is um, key here. And there's a couple of great lessons you pointed out that I'm going to unpack. And that is um, the information is relevant. Um, We're not putting recipes on pieces. Um, and the other thing is, is that, you know, I'm sure from your marketing, and I don't mean about your color of your hair, but I tell the story about a Q-tip. And that is, if I do a seminar and ask the audience, you know, if I ask you to go get me something to clean my ears, what do you get? And the audience will always say a Q-tip. And in fact, that's the brand. They've got a cotton swab. What most people don't understand is that it took Johnson & Johnson 8.4 contacts before you actually call mm-hmm. the product their name like the right. old Xerox instead of a copies. So you understood that 8.4 context. I also like to point out, look at Wayne, if I could do three mailers, most agents will give up after one, as you said, maybe two. But if I could do three mailers into your neighborhood and take all of your business, I wouldn't be standing here. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be in everybody yes. else's market. Mm-hmm. Right? I'd take the seven and a half million pieces and put my name on them. Of and course. serve the business out. Right? So I think that that was a really, really good point that it, it's, um, and it's, it has to come from your marketing background to new, no, and to have the patience to know. I think you're, yeah, and I, I, I'm just, I admire that. And that's why when I started this conversation, I said, if you gave me a thousand dollars to bet against you or for you, having never met you, I would have bet against it because 99, my 30 years of doing this, there's not a lot of agents that come out and know that right out of the gate. Usually I have to talk them off the cliff. They'll go even six months, which is just two months shy of perfection, right? Mm-hmm. The eight contacts. 
and they'll want to quit. I had this conversation this morning with the young lady that we're coaching and she has a budget set aside to do six months. And I said, Brooke, here's what I want you to do. But she, was, she has a gift from someone to do the first six months. Mm -hmm. I said, you're going to put $600 a month away starting right now, every single month. So when the six months come up, you still have a full budget in which to work with, right? And by that time, she should have enough traction and enough, enough sales. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else you'd like to add, Wayne? No, David, other than my appreciation for, for you and your team as an incredibly focused, valuable resource, um, you know, you, you started the conversation or early in the conversation, we talked about the, you know, the number of transactions that I did in 2021. And the, the last piece of that that is pertinent is how many of those were a direct result of our direct marketing effort? And I will tell you all but one. Wow. So six out of seven. Six out of seven. Close to $10 million in sales. Better than uh, 10 million. Yeah. I'm not going to disclose your commission, but I think it more than paid for the marketing piece. Easily. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't an issue. No, that's well, you know what though? Again, I'm going to leave it at this. For the first six months, you didn't have an income to pay for your marketing. I Off did not. Me. But now you're covered and you'll be... Amazingly enough, and just you can always say, take this to the bank. If you had six this year, my goal is to have 10 next year and then 16. And then we're going to get into that three year period where I'm going to try and get you up to that 30% market share on your own, mm -hmm. not with two teams. Once we get there, we'll have to talk about additional strategies. Um, and that just depends. I always want to honor your lifestyle as well. So if, if, if 30 million in sales is good and you and your wife have time to enjoy each other, and you're not slaves to this business, I'm going to say, hang on and just leave it at that. No, of course. If you want more and build a team, I can help you do that as well as you know. Uh, Wayne, mm -hmm. thank you very, very much. You know, oh, it's really, been a really pleasure. It's a pleasure, pleasure David. You. You're welcome. Thank you much. Mm -hmm. Bye now. Well, first of all, let's thank Wayne again. Brilliant agent, super classy guy. And I just want to give you some key takeaways uh, that I came away with Wayne. And that was when when he first got into the business, he did a tremendous amount of research on everything related to real estate. I mean, he could tell you more about what the agent's volume was in the last year than most broker and owners. And so he joined a company with the objective of being able to create his own brand slash look, you know, without infringing on the actual brand. And then he wanted a powerful enough brand alongside him. So he wanted a recognized, established brand with the capacity to be able to do his own thing as well, look with us, which he did, uh, and it worked out brilliantly. I think the unique thing about Wayne was is that he researched everything from commercial to mobile homes to low end, high end, you, you name it, and he saw the greatest opportunity in luxury, which I thought was really interesting. And his perception with two agents had 30% of the market. A lot of people would think that's market share domination. And Wayne comes out of the marketing and advertising world of 30 years as an executive, uh, and he knew that that wasn't even close to what most companies would call dominating. Um, Wayne found the uh, real marketing through the Luxury Institute, and we are the only approved marketing company for their clientele worldwide. Um, and I think that he really utilizes the fact that we could customize anything for him. He's also looking to expand, which really is, if you didn't catch that, like how many things can you do in this industry? Well, you do A, you make a good living. He made 12 million, well, he sold 12 million. Now he wants to make 24 million. Can he take what he did with us and just step and repeat it? And of course the answer is yes. And in my 30 years in the business, I've never seen anything that you can step and repeat other than farming or direct mail, as, as we call it. So I think that was a really, really good, insightful thing if, if you didn't catch that uh, for him. And I have clients, um, I'll give you a couple examples. Um, Greg Newman, downtown San Diego, started with four market reports. He currently does 68. Um, that's 13 years later. That's a really good point. How many of you did something 13 years ago that's still working today? So that's always, always interesting for me to hear. And he, again, recapping, um, and this is really interesting to me. And that is, is that he, one of the things he enjoys most about working with real marketing is everything is here. And he can enjoy lifestyle. Now, I know a lot of agents that make a lot of money and have no life at all. 
So I really like that about Wayne is that he's, he's going to manage his lifestyle and not let this business run his life, yet make a very, very good living. And um, I think that was a really interesting point from Wayne. Um, we handle, and as Wayne says, we handle everything you can imagine. It's personal brochures, property brochures, postcards, um, you name it, we do it. He just calls us and we take care of it, anything that he wants, even his websites. And the quality, what he really, I love this point that he put it out, is the quality of the marketing limits his competitors because they can't, they can't really find another company other than us. And of course, Wayne gets an exclusive in his market report in his area. So they can't really find another company that could possibly compete with him. And then finally, uh, marketing is a long-term game, not a magic bullet. And Wayne comes out of the, the, the advertising industry, uh, which I think is an honor for us to get to work with him. That is, I just think if we look at most of the industry, like everything is a magic bullet. I always say, if you go to convention, you, you go to the convention and you get all these booths and you go to the booth and they say, just sell one home and you'll pay for this. And you leave convention, you got to sell 17 things to cover what you just signed up for. And none of them are step and repeatable. They're one hit wonders or magic bullets. In five years ago, they weren't there. And five years from now, they won't be there. And that's just my history of 30 years of going to convention. Anyway, thanks, Wayne. Thanks again. Super, super appreciate you and, and I really admire your success and your professionalism. And at this point, what I'd like to do is we're going to switch back over to the real marketing side. I think last time we left off with some statistics. Um, that 78% of homeowners would work with the neighborhood expert. And now you've heard it, right, uh, as I said, from the horse's mouth, two agents, completely different markets, Idaho and, and Scottsdale and Phoenix. Uh, and that is still true with both of them. And both of them are dominating their respective markets by doing what we do for them. So thank you again. This has been another episode of the Real Marketing University podcast, bringing you the new real estate success stories each and every month. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're interested in learning more about real marketing, please visit realmarketingforyou.com. That's realmarketing, the number four, u.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe now on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We look forward to helping you on your journey and becoming the local neighborhood expert. Thanks for listening.